Hey everyone, um, welcome to CorelCon 2020. Uh, I'm Johannes, I'm the chairman of Correlate, and I'm uh, really excited uh, to welcome you to uh, this uh, weekend uh, for Data for Good. Not really, I'm, I'm not only ex excited uh, for the weekend because of the, the really cool program we have ahead of us, but also uh, because this year's um, Correlate Meetup is, is also kind of an anniversary for us because it's the fifth year we are in right now. And uh, this is our fifth uh, annual meetup. And we have been with this meetup, we, we always did it in person. Um, and, and we always try to do it in, in different places and in Germany. So we've been to Berlin, we have been to Hamburg, uh, Mannheim, Duisburg, Bonn, and uh, now this year, a new first, uh, we are doing it digitally. But um, that is very exciting because we can have a lot more people joining in. And um, yeah, we are really happy that we can we can do it over, over this tool. And I hope that it will be a, um, a great experience as has been in the, uh, the last couple of years, but I'm quite sure of that. And yeah, to uh, kick things off for this weekend, I will have a little uh, introduction to, to Data for Good and, and our work for you. And I will share some um, lessons learned that um, yeah, we, of like things we encountered over the last couple of years working with nonprofits and, and data scientists and uh, will hopefully um, be helpful to a data scientist who want to go into the space of data for good as well as nonprofit organizations um, who are excited about the, the prospect of, of working with data. Uh, but uh, maybe a couple more words about the weekend. Um, this year we, we follow the same structure um, that we have uh, almost every year. So on Friday, it's all about um, uh, data for good and uh, working with nonprofit organizations. So we'll share some of our project work with you and give a bit more insight in how our, into how our um, projects work and hopefully give you a bit of a better uh, understanding of um, yeah, how, how data can actually be useful in a nonprofit space. Then on Saturday, uh, it's, it's uh, as, as, as usual, very packed with uh, great workshops, uh, uh, technical workshops. Um, we um, always try to, to have workshops at different levels so that we can accommodate uh, beginners in the, in the field of data science as well as um, more senior um, uh, people. Uh, I think we have some really interesting stuff for everyone. And then on, on Sunday, we kind of come back um, to, to correlate and, and think with, with all of you about um, how, we, how we can develop this uh, field of data for good in, in, in Germany and Europe further. And yeah, get a, um, yeah just gather all your ideas and, and talk with you about, about the things we have, we've planned so far. But uh, as today we have, um, Nonprofit organizations here, as well as data scientists, uh, I, I thought we, we start with a um, bit more general introduction in, into, into data for good and what like what we believe data for good is, is about and, and how we as, as correlate uh, practice it. So a good starting point uh, might be our, our, our motto, uh, our, our mission. Uh, which is democratizing the potential of, of data science. And uh, so what, what I want to do now first is uh, go through that um, statement and um, one after another dissect what, what, it, what it means uh, to give you a better um, understanding of, of what we're doing. So uh, let's first uh, talk about uh, what data science is actually, because there are a lot of different um, definitions of it, a lot of different understandings. Um, so what, what, we, what do we understand um, that data science is? Uh, so the definition we use uh, most often is, uh, is, is this one, which is um, quite, quite common, is that data science is kind of at this intersection between statistics and math, computer science and, and coding, and uh, some form of domain expertise. 
Uh, so what that means is we, we always have some kind of statistics involved, uh, but we use uh, modern programming languages and, and computer science to, to scale that up and then apply it in a, in a certain domain. So in, in our correlate network, we have a lot of different uh, representations of this. So we, we might, for example, have a, a computational biologist. Um, we might have a social scientist who is doing a lot of survey methodology. Uh, we might even have uh, people working in um, linguistics uh, using using data science and machine learning. Uh, we have business analysts who, who use it um, in their company. So um, all of them like fall somewhere on this on the spectrum. Um, some are more heavily focused on statistics. Uh, some might be more. Um, more heavily leaning toward like the computer science part of it, like for example, data engineers. Um, um, and then some are more leaning into the domain, they, they're coming from the domain expertise uh, kind of things from, from their field and now discovering that data and data analytics can help them a lot. So as my, my personal journey in, in the field of data science, uh, I think uh, reflects that I, I started out as a political scientist doing a lot of survey, metho survey methodology uh, going going more into the direction of statistics, doing more modeling, more um, some causal inference stuff, and now I'm I'm, I'm venturing down to the computer science uh, side of things, uh, doing a lot of uh, software development actually. Um, so yeah, we, we we use this definition and, and we we quite like it because I think it's it's quite inclusive and. Um, that's also our vision of, of, of what it what it should be like welcoming for to a lot of people who are just excited about working with data and um, like sharing this 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 common common language um, that the data science and and its tools give us so and like data science has a, has a lot of tools that we, we can work with um, so what are we talking about when, when we talk about the potential of data science? I think uh, in general, we hear a lot about uh, AI at the moment and, and big data and all the, all the, all the cool things that, that Google is doing or Tesla is doing. All the big companies are, are really doing. But um, when, you, when you look at, at, at most companies, how they're using data science, it's, it's much more, um, <laughs> let's say, down to earth. It's not this like really a cutting edge uh, machine learning um, stuff that is used, but it, it, like the, it, it, that's just like the peak of the iceberg. And in, in general, there's so many applications uh, for, for data science. Um, just like as an example, like what, what companies um, um, quite commonly do with data science, for example, they, they pretty good churn. So for example, if you, if you have a large customer base and you, and you want to predict like who is most likely to to terminate their contract or leave the company? Uh, you you want to like model those probabilities, and that gives you the opportunity to kind of like do something about it. Like you might give them a discount, or you might contact them. Um, but it, it it helps you to to model that that the complexity. Another use case would be social media monitoring. So as a company, you want to know. Um, how are people talking about your product uh, online? Uh, are there any bad reviews that we have to uh, engage with? Um, so, so use like natural language processing to, to kind of analyze this, this, this huge amount of text data and um, analyze uh, what, what is said about your product. Last example would be um, that is also quite commonly used is you evaluate your marketing channels. Right, you have as a company, you might have different uh, marketing channels, and you want to uh, calculate what is what is the return on investment, um, and what happens if we put more money into this this channel or another channel, and it helps you make um, evidence based decisions on on what should you should focus on and, and properly uh, evaluate it. And if if you look at those uh, use cases, um, it's it's not that hard to think about use cases that don't benefit uh, companies per se, but civil society organizations. So in, in those use cases, uh, normally you optimize um, for something related to the business. Uh, maybe it's, it's, it's profit or it's, it's spending um, or 
um, PR work, you're always optimizing for something. And then in a lot of nonprofit organizations, uh, they try to optimize for something as well, uh, as well, but it's it's mostly impact, right? So we could use those use cases and um, apply them just in a different setting with a different goal um, in the in the civil society. Um, so, for example, instead of predicting churn, um, you could when you have a mentoring program and you want to predict like what what are good matches and which matches might. Uh, fall apart, you might uh, employ very similar models as in when you're when you're trying to pick churn. Or instead of social media monitoring, um, you could work with a, um, a counseling um, organization that is uh, doing counseling online for some some at risk groups, and you can use natural language processing to kind of like filter um, requests and, and 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 distribute the requests to the people who are. Um, uh, who can best deal with with those incoming requests and then um, reduce the complexity for this for this organization there as well or instead of evaluating marketing channels you can evaluate uh, the impact of your of your programs is it is it doing good or is it doing more harm than good actually um, so it's it's very similar techniques that are, that are employed here but just used in a, in a different context and that kind of brings us to, to the last question when there is potential of, of data science uh, in in the nonprofit space and in, in the for good space, uh, why is it not used more? Or how can we uh, make sure that those um, sometimes quite powerful uh, methods and resources can be used for, for social good? And uh, that is kind of where we come in. And when we started Correlate, we, we also thought about like, what is the best way to do Data for good, and I know around the world there are a lot of organizations who um, who are in the space of, of data for good and all in their in their own way. But generally, there are like two different uh, perspectives on on this on this uh, um, on this uh, problem. Really, and I think one one perspective is a top down perspective. So you have a team of of, of uh, tech people uh, who are really good at what they do, and they um want they say okay we want to do something good with with our skills so they go out and 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 look um for opportunities like given their skill set they look for opportunities to apply that to to um an area they care about so they make an active decision of like okay we we are really excited about this topic and um so we want to do something in that domain um but there are some problems with that because in 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 at that time, like the for good aspect, are right, defined by the by the people with the tech expertise, and that might not reflect like how other people think about for good and how other people would, would set the priorities, and th that is like a problem that never fully goes away. Um, but if you take a different perspective, a bottom up perspective, um, I think you can mitigate some of that, and that that's what we are trying to do. So with with correlate, we we look at the this pluralistic civil society. We look at all those different organizations um, with their uh, impact logics, um, with their with their goals, and we as Carly, we kind of want to be there as someone who has that tech expertise. And like, when somebody needs our expertise, they can come to us, and and, and we um, try to help them. Um, so it's the democratizing aspect is really. Um, being there for the civil society as someone who supports them in implementing their visions. And what we see over the last couple of years, we had so many different areas where we were active. Um, and like what kind of projects we're doing is, is, is largely determined by who comes to us uh, with, the, with their project ideas. Of course, they always have to fall into um, <laughs> like, an, like an area of, 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 of uh, views and perspectives. Um, that, that are like not extreme or, or um, in any way harmful. Um, but in the end, like we, we, we want our, our volunteers to decide like what projects they want to do and like what causes they want to support and, and really just like be the platform for, for that to happen. And uh, we try more and more to do that in a decentralized way uh, with having local chapters, uh, having chapters in, in other countries um and and giving them this this framework that we have built for doing um data for good projects 
um, and like really trying to, to um, yeah, uh, so serve a lot of organizations with them. That brings me uh, to, to correlate uh, what we're doing. So uh, we are a Germany-wide network uh, of over 1,300 data scientists who, who want to use their, their data science expertise um, for social impact. And uh, what we do uh, is mostly focused on, on, on three areas. So first of all, we, we do those data for good projects, uh, collaborating with nonprofit organizations uh, from all over Germany. Um, and we will, in, in the next talk, we'll talk a bit more about like how those projects work and what we do there. And then we'll have some examples later as well. So I don't want to focus too much, too heavily on that. Uh, the second pillar is education. So like one way we have an impact, I think, on, on a broader civil society is by doing those, the singular projects and, and, uh, talking about it and helping other organizations to really realize like what is the impact they could have um, or they, data could have. Um, so we are not only educating um, data scientists, we, we try to be a platform for data scientists who want to have a social uh, impact to exchange ideas, to come up with new projects, um, expanding their skill set. Um, but also we, we, are, we are more moving into the direction of also doing some, some groundwork in, in dealing with data and, and, and trying to, to help a lot of uh, organizations that way. And lastly, we also want to have this, this dialogue about um, the value and usefulness of data and data analysis for the common good, um, especially in times where we have a lot of discussions about AI, uh, the impact of AI. Um, like we, we try to uh, talk like really specifically about like what are concrete, what is concrete potential of data science, but what are also the obstacles and um yeah really try to to have an applied um perspective uh, on, on on those issues um so far we, we we're working with our core team i think you will get to know a lot of them over the weekend uh we, we've completed over 30 projects with um with large organizations with also very small organizations like for example a local food bank um um, but also, yeah, big organizations like the European Youth Parliament, and um, having like in, in, the, in the projects we have very, we employ very different methods and and, and have very different goals um, that range all the way from like analyzing surveys to more advanced uh, machine learning applications. Um, but I will get into a bit more detail about that uh, in a second. Yeah, and then uh, our workshops, our data science uh, workshops that we try to do. Uh, Germany-wide, but also in our local chapters. And I think you will hear a lot about them uh, this weekend as well. Uh, so now I just uh, quickly want to go over four lessons that, that we've learned, I think, in the last four years, and uh, that also shaped our perspective of what it means to do data for good, um, mostly in, in, in a German context. Uh, so first of all, I think this this might be the most important one of all. Uh, a problem where stated is half solved. Um, the founder of, of DataKind, um, an organization that was, uh, was a bit of an inspiration for us when we founded Coralette, uh, he once said, like, like you know, you, you, all, you have probably heard this, this, uh, this saying that data science is 80% data cleaning and 20% actual uh, modeling. So if 80% is data cleaning, then the, la the last 20% uh, are not uh, modeling, but uh, communication, and that is uh, data for good. And I, th I think that that's right. Um, like it's it's really hard to to find good data science uh, problems. Um, there are a lot of organizations uh, coming to us, and and they have some some questions in mind, have some ideas about projects, but turning those ideas into into to good data for good project is, is really hard. And um, that's, that's mainly because we have to look at three aspects uh, when we look at a data for good project, right? So first of all, is it is it impact oriented? And um, how, we, how we try to ensure that is that we talk with the organization about their theory of change, their impact logic, try to understand how they work. Um, 
how the processes work. And uh, along this, this impact logic, we identify together uh, points where we could help with data science, um, help them along that, that impact logic. And uh, that is really important so that we kind of, kind of don't lose, lose, lose track of that, that um, and ensure that what we are doing is, is actually having an impact in that organization. Um, but the other two aspects are, are equally important. So um, um, a project, of course, has to be feasible. So we are working with volunteers. Uh, we are not working full time on those projects. Um, so you also have to take into account what is feasible in two, three months with uh, four or five volunteers. Um, and you also have to, um, you, know, you really have to look at them and uh, don't overestimate the resources. And, uh, but also don't underestimate what, what you can do in this time. And um, the last one is, is kind of this user-centric perspective that it really has to be useful for an organization. So the wildest uh, machine learning model um, doesn't help at all if it can be implemented in the day-to-day -day business of that uh, organization or if the people don't uh, feel comfortable using it um, or if um, the results are communicated in a way that it, it doesn't really help at all or it's, it's, it's confusing um, the organizations even more. Uh, so you really have to look at that as well. And finding a project that is in an in intersection is, is really hard. And you have to be very creative of coming up um, with, with drafting good problem statements and, and building good projects on that. But it's uh, kind of also what, what I always found um, very exciting about about the data for good work uh, is this creativity in, in, in coming up with with good solutions. The second learning um, is is kind of something we we um, it was an assumption of us in the beginning. That was also kind of like what we tried to build on uh, as correlate, but um, I, I think we validated it. Um, a lot of times in the last couple of years, the data for good is not a one-way street. And uh, I like to think that our volunteers, um, when they do a project with an organization, they learn as much from the organization as the organization learns from them. And uh, I remember a lot of uh, project kickoffs and, and data dialogues where the data scientists and the um, representatives from the organization really got into um, into the like really in depth into the problems and, and and talking about it from from those both pers perspectives, bringing that in the domain expertise of the organizations and the data science expertise, and I think both sides can um, can profit a lot from them, and also the, the our projects members can learn a lot from each other in the projects because we have always very interdisciplinary teams, um, and uh, it's very interesting to see how how people do things differently in, in different disciplines. Um, the third one, it's also, I think it's very important to, to have in mind when we talk about uh, data for good, and uh, especially in the context when a lot of people are talking about AI and, and, and machine learning and all those uh, cutting edge um, um, things, um, do what you can with what you have uh, where you are. Um, in a lot of um, nonprofit organizations, they don't have a huge IT budget. Um, a lot of um, nonprofit organizations don't have um, trained people. Um, so they kind of like they all started with um, like a goal in mind of like how how, make, how to make our society better and like um, a specific plan of action, but um, not necessarily like a lot of them didn't plan to build like the big organizations that they are. To, uh, that they are now. So, um, so what you what you often find in, in terms of, of of data that is there or um, IT infrastructure, um, it is what it is. You, you you often have to work with that and and kind of find a way to to work with it uh, nevertheless and and make something useful for that organization. So just one example is uh, we we did a project. Um, a while back with a with a food bank and um, that challenge is very similar to uh, the challenge a lot of companies have they kind of have to predict how many resources they need in the next week or the next month 
Uh, so they kind of have to predict how many people are coming in, how much food are we giving out. And we had, um, it's, the food bank is, is not really a digital organization, but they, they kept records of uh, for, for the last couple of years. So they have like had historic data of like what they gave out. And uh, what you might think now is, okay, cool. And we can build a predictive model and um, um, model that uh, in, in, in real time, um, what the demand might be um, uh, dependent on, on the weather and uh, other data source, sources that, that, we, that we had uh, in this project. Um, but, the, but the problem is in, in that organization, in, in the food bank, they don't really have a computer there. And it's, it's really hard, like where would you implement that kind of thing? How would you work with, uh, with the volunteers who are not, uh, who might not um, be able to use that? So what our project team did, uh, I think is, is pretty great. So they, they analyzed the data as if they would have built a predictive model, but then went a step back and derived heuristics from the data. Like for example, like how is the development of uh, food vouchers over, over months? How is it dependent on, on the weather or, or other things? Uh, things that you can really well communicate to the volunteers and that help them uh, kind of make better decisions, um, better judgments, like when, when thinking about planning for, for, for the weeks ahead. I think that that's, a, that's a great example of um, working what you have, where you are. And, and I, I really like this, this uh, graph of, of the data science hierarchy of needs of um, like normally what you would start at the bottom and like build out an infrastructure and then uh, keep adding to it. And, and eventually you, you might uh, be able to automate stuff, but a prerequisite for that is having good data, having validated data, uh, know your problem and uh, having analyzed that in, in, in depth. And uh, that's what we don't find in a lot of organizations. So um yeah we we have to we have to work with them and um with with the education side of things that correlate uh, i think we, we we're starting um to to build um, more in this direction so that we can also build a better foundation uh, in a lot of nonprofit organizations so that more of the the fancier stuff can can come into play uh, maybe at a later point And the last uh, learning, I think that's a bit more more general. Um, we when we think about uh, data science for for social good, like as an ecosystem or civil society, and and data science, and that is uh, finding the, the the right narrative is is really hard. So when we started, uh, correct five years ago, it's, it was not that long ago, but uh, back then. Um, the buzzword of um, of the day was was big data, and everyone was talking about big data. Then somebody came up with like smart data, and in this like policy politics bubble, that was what was talked about mostly. And and, and now that is um, artificial intelligence. And um, so when like everybody's talking about that, and, and it's it's on, it's on the on the policy agenda, and then there are a lot of uh, programs uh, from the government uh, to support um, those technologies. And then you see a lot of uh, businesses, a lot of startups um, who, are, who are just like <laughs> going into it, just like embracing this uh, narrative of AI and uh, really hard. And then when you look under the hood, they're doing like mostly rather mundane data science stuff. Right? Um, so that is what is what is talked about it. But then when you go to the nonprofit organizations and you you would you would talk to them like, oh yeah, you want to do, would you be up for an AI project? Huh? They would they would not be interested because uh, I, I think a lot of nonprofit organizations have a very good bullshit detector, and <laughs> when they feel that something is not is like making their life actually harder and not easier, they they're not really interested. And uh, really passionate people who really. Um, very often really know what they do and then what, what what is helpful to their to the organization and their, their mission so the narrative that works uh, a lot better um with nonprofit organizations is is showing them how data science can reduce complexity in, in the organization and the kind of like unnecessary complexity because i think in the in the social space we have a lot of complexity that is good that is necessary um and that that you cannot and you should not 
um, automate away or or um, reduce. But but there's still a lot of, of stuff that they could, where, where you can reduce complexity for organizations and help them um, fulfilling fulfilling their mission. And that kind of narrative, I think, works very well with with nonprofit organizations. Focus on the on the use cases. Focus on not not so much on the methods, but what is the value that a, a project like this would create for them. Um, but this is kind of a paradox um, because on the, on the one hand, uh, you you don't want to talk too much about this like meta level. Uh, AI um, discussion uh, because I, I think a lot of nonprofit organizations are, are not there. They, they they don't want to talk about that. Uh, some some certainly are, but on the other side, you have to right because you, as a nonprofit organization, you, you need uh, you need resources. You you, you need to so support. Um, so it's really hard to find a balance between those two. Um, like sometimes I solve that uh, by like when I'm asked like to give a talk about AI and, and society that I will put <laughs> uh, in my in the topic of my of my of my keynote or um, workshop I, I put something with AI and then not talk about it the whole week, uh, the workshop but but uh, talk about concrete um, use cases but as I think that's 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 one of the hardest parts in, in, in navigating. Uh, how to talk about data science it's a very abstract topic and um but it's something you you, you have to think about and uh, i think something we learn about uh, a lot more as we as we go along um so from those learnings we we kind of derived our, our guiding principles that uh, guide a lot of our work um right now on how we think about uh, data science for good and uh, I think those are also like the guiding principles for for the weekend to come. So I think it, it's a nice uh, transition to to the, to the following part. Um, we really value flexibility. Uh, we know that we work with nonprofit organizations who have limited um, time, resources, and and volunteers uh, who work on weekends, do great stuff um, uh, after work for us. Uh, so we um, we always account for that and and value that. Uh, secondly, diversity. I think it is absolutely crucial that we have um, a, a very diverse uh, set of data scientists uh, out there in the world, not only in the social, um, in, in, the, in the data for good space, but, but in general, uh, having those different perspectives um, is, is extremely valuable in our projects and, and beyond that. We also believe in pragmatism, um, that you should always start with the needs of the organization, what is really helping them, um, and not like force um, to, to use like special uh, methods uh, or technologies. Um, like always start where the organization is. We also believe in knowledge management, and not uh, with not only within Correlate, but also like sharing our knowledge, um, making it open source as much as possible. And um, yeah, trying to to engage uh, beyond what we do at Correlate. Um, we uh, we really value appreciation. I think uh, not only what our volunteers do, but what um, most civil society organizations under very precarious um, circumstances are doing is is absolutely amazing. Um, we're seeing it right now with COVID nineteen. What the what the civil society is doing is is, is absolutely vital and um, proves it once again how important that is and um yeah we we want to we really want to value that um not only in our work but we try to um yeah um also communicate that uh, beyond our work and last but not least is, is data data for good for us is, is about empowerment i think uh, we should get to the point um that organizations can can help themselves um I think that we, we always think that they should uh, make the calls at the end of the day, that they should make the decisions. And, and we, with data science, we, we can just help them um, getting there and, and, and uh, supporting that. And uh, the same goes for our project teams, um, that they can, can make their own decisions, that they um, can work as, as agile as, as, as possible. And, um, um, yeah, can can reorganize themselves. So, with uh, that being said, um, 
just a few on a bit over time. Um, I uh, first of all, um, before we start, want to thank our great organizing team, Frina um, and Isabel, uh, most of all for for organizing this. Uh, I think we are already all very thankful for that. Um, I'm I'm really excited for the weekend. I, I also um, at this point, really want to thank uh, Google.org, uh, who have been um, supporting us uh, this year and will be supporting us next year uh, in a really flexible way and, and, and giving us um, the resources uh, we need to, to, to scale uh, what we are doing at Correlate. And, and they are a big part of, of why um, this, this conference is, is possible. So uh, thank you very much at that point. And now, um, Yes, I wish us all a, um, a fun um, weekend, and I'm really looking forward to, to what uh, is coming next. Thank you, Johannes. Oh, I just... Okay, perfect. Um, now I can't hear myself anymore. That's, uh, that's better. Um, yeah, so thank you for this uh, very nice introduction to the general idea of um, data for good and uh, also correlate. Um, also, as a long-term correlator, I learned uh, new perspectives, perspectives from that. 